Today, we're going to continue our Rookie Spotlight series and talk about one of the most inspiring young players in the NFL. Bucky Irving went through unbelievable tragedy. Not only did he lose a ton of family members, but, but for a while, no one ever thought he was going to make it in football. Luckily, he put all the haters to rest, blew up into a blue chip recruit, and then made a surprising choice where he'd go to college. After spending some time at Minnesota, Bucky Irving would transfer over to Oregon, where he became one of the best running backs in all of college football, and despite doing pretty much everything there, he was still doubted going into the NFL because of his height, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in my eyes got a complete steal. In today's video, I'm going to go through the entire story of Bucky Irving. We're going to go through his tragic childhood, we're going to talk about his big time high school career, his time at both Minnesota and Oregon, and ultimately how I think he will do at the Tampa Bay Bucks. We do have a lot to cover today, but before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you didn't support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Bucky Irving. To be honest, when Buccaneers fans heard that they drafted Bucky Irving for the first time, they probably did not know much about him. He went with pick number 125, but back in his native city of Chicago, he has been a big part of the football community since he was dominating on the Pee Wee circuit on the south side. His head coach said, quote, In the youth football world, at least in our area, everybody knew who Bucky Irving was. Early on, Letitia and Marcellus Irving noticed their son had wide eyes at birth. When he would fall asleep, his eyes would remain slightly open, leading Marcellus to coin his nickname Bucky. His real name is Marquise. But Marcellus never got to witness Bucky's football career. When Bucky was just two years old, his father would tragically pass away. Absolutely awful. Years later, when he got a scholarship offer to go to Minnesota, tragedy would strike again. He ended up losing his grandmother. Not long after that, one of his younger brothers was also shot and killed. Irving said, quote, I carry them with me every single day, and I know they're smiling down on me. Honestly, that is unbelievably difficult for any person to go to, and apparently at six years old, he said he wanted to play in the NFL. He ended up channeling his energy into sports and blew up quickly in both football and basketball. His friend Corey Kroom said, quote, I knew he was going to be special. Obviously, he's younger than me, but we played on the same Little League team together, and I knew what type of guy he was. Corey Crooms is currently in the NFL, by the way. He ended up being a star, but was an even better human being. Irving said, quote, Growing up, seeing the things that I saw and what I've been through, I had a mental focus on my goal and what I wanted to do in life. I just wanted to be the guy from the south side of Chicago to set the example for the kids back home and show them what they're capable of if they put their mind to it. Irving was a basketball player first, as he eventually transferred from the powerhouse Morgan Park his freshman year to then Hillcrest his sophomore year. When he was a sophomore, the team ended up going 12-1 and, and went to the Class 5A semifinals. During his junior year, the team went 10-2 and, and had a trip to the state quarterfinals. While he was in high school, he did everything. His coach said, quote, When he was at Hillcrest, we had him do everything. Irving played running back, receiver, quarterback, defensive back, and even kicker, and coaches knew he was a star from the fifth game of his sophomore season when he recorded nearly 400 all-purpose yards and four touchdowns against their rival Lamont. His coach said, quote, right then and there, I knew he was going to be a special talent and was going to do some big things. Their assistant coach, Kyron Weaver, also noted a time when apparently on one punt return, he broke nine tackles on his way to the end zone. And he said, quote, if you were there, you'd never forget it. He was also a basketball star as Hillcrest's basketball coach, Don Houston, said that he relied heavily on Irving as he started three years at point guard. And that team had two division one basketball prospects. He led the team in scoring as a junior and Houston would count on him to do all the dirty work. But as good of a basketball player as Irving was, his coach said, quote, he knew where his bread and butter would be. That was football. As a junior, he played in 12 games, scoring 28 touchdowns, 22 rushing, 4 receiving, 1 passing, and 1 on a punt return. At one point in his high school career, he would star along Corey Crooms, as he was a receiver at Western Michigan and most recently Minnesota, and signed an undrafted free agent deal with the Dallas Cowboys. Crooms said, quote, We talked about this since we were on the same team. We always stay in contact, and on draft night when he got drafted and I got picked up, we called and said we went two for two. Coming from Hillcrest, a lot of people counted us out and said we couldn't do it, and we just wanted to prove everybody wrong. Over the course of three years at Hillcrest, Irving accumulated nearly 3,300 yards. His senior year was cut short due to everything going on in the world, and in terms of his recruitment, he received 24 offers, headlined by Michigan, TCU, South Carolina, Utah, and Michigan State. Central Michigan was the first school to offer Irving a scholarship, and Wisconsin was his first Big Ten offer. His head coach said, quote, Then everything just skyrocketed from there, which I expected. He didn't really believe me when I told it was going to happen, and he didn't really know too much. 
Where would he end up going? Well, the Gophers offered Irving a scholarship in May of 2019, on the same day his grandmother died. He said, quote, that meant a lot to him. He felt the love and he felt he wanted to go to Minnesota. It ended up coming down to two Big Ten programs, as quote, Purdue recruited him really hard. I would say that Minnesota was harder on him early on, and I think the difference was Gophers head coach PJ Fleck put in a lot more legwork. By this time, Bucky Irving was a four-star recruit, and Minnesota would win out for his talents, and some were kind of questioning why he went there. I mean, Minnesota doesn't typically get these kind of recruits, but this was a big deal. According to 24-7 Sports, Irving was a four-star recruit, the number 13 running back, and the 199th best player in the class of 2021. So, how would he end up doing at Minnesota? Well, let's take a look. So when Bucky Irving arrived as a true freshman in 2021, at the time he was stuck in a running back rotation that included Mohamed Ibrahim and Trey Potts, but he did see a lot of work in the second half of the season after there were some injury issues for the Gophers. In particular, everyone found out about him in the Maryland game, as he went for 105 yards and a touchdown, and then the following week against Northwestern, he went for 110 yards and two touchdowns. He finished the year strong, as he had 80 yards against Iowa, 70 yards against Indiana, and then 39 yards and a win over number 14, Wisconsin. He'd end up helping them get to the guaranteed rate bowl, where they would play against West Virginia, and in that game, he'd go for 129 yards. In total, he finished with 699 yards and four touchdowns, and Marquise Bucky Irving was a guy who blew up. After just one year at Minnesota, though, he would enter his name into the transfer portal, and 24-7 Sports said, quote, The 5'10 back loved the school, and he loved the people he played beside, but he wasn't thrilled at the offense he was playing in. He felt his versatility was wasted in the Minnesota scheme and believed he found one that could showcase his skill set better. So where would he end up going? Well, after Oregon lost CJ Verdell and Travis Dye to USC, the Ducks had a lot of work to do at the spot as they did bring in Noah Whittington and return Jordan Bryant James and Byron Cardwell and Sean Dollars, but they needed a guy who could come in right away and play. That was Bucky Irving, and that's also where we get to the sponsor of today's video. If you're like me, I love to help out college athletes, and the sponsor of today's video is actually a student athlete at the University of Oregon. He reached out to me a couple weeks ago, and we have since become friends, and I'm happy to help him out here. My friend Osawewe Agbonkankan is currently a student who has a 3.9 GPA and is on the Dean's List for Oregon as he majors in economics and eventually plans to go to law school. He's currently on the track team and is one of the brighter young runners on the team, and he wrote a book called Psychic Suit. It's been a product of six years of work for him and is actually published by Songspire Books. It's currently available on Amazon, and the story can be best described as an original globetrotting superhero espionage thriller with sci-fi and fantasy elements. What really makes the story unique is some of the heroes in the novel have mental health conditions, and one of the big points in the story is how the superhero, who is a public revered figure, goes about his life while suffering from mental health challenges like so many people in the real world do. The novel is also available on Amazon, and I'd highly recommend you check it out. I always love to help out student athletes, and if you're an Oregon fan who wants to support a guy with a bright future and is also helping one of the top track programs in the country, be sure to check out his book, and I'll leave a link down in the comment section below for you to check that out. Now let's get back to the video and talk about Bucky Irving's time in Eugene. So as I said, when Irving would arrive at Oregon, he would have an immediate amount of hype as he would be above highly rated players. Irving would immediately win the starting job, as while well he struggled in week one against number three Georgia, he, as he blew up with his first touchdown as a duck against Eastern Washington. From there, he'd become one of the more consistent running backs in the country, as he had nearly 100 yards in their win over BYU, had over 80 yards in wins against both Washington State and Stanford, had a touchdown against Arizona, went for over 100 yards, and a win over a top 10 UCLA team, and then also helped them beat both Cal and Colorado. In that game against the Buffs, he had 120 yards, and then would have a season-high 146 yards and a loss to Washington. To finish out the year, he'd have a touchdown against Utah, and they would have 50 yards and against Oregon State. They'd end up getting a chance to play in the Holiday Bowl, where they would win by one point over North Carolina, and in that game, he'd run for 149 yards and two touchdowns. In total, Bucky ran the ball 156 times for 1,058 yards and five touchdowns. Obviously, he was good, but he would need to improve upon that touchdown number in 2024 if he really wanted to be a factor in the draft. In their first game against Portland State, he'd start out strong, as he just had four carries for 119 yards and two touchdowns. If you do the math, that's 30 yards per carry. Pretty insane. After that, he'd have a touchdown in their win against Texas Tech, would help them beat both Hawaii and Colorado, and then would have a touchdown in their blowout victory over Stanford. 
Up next, they'd have a huge test against number 7 Washington, as the Huskies got them last year, and sadly it would happen again, as they would lose by 3 points, and despite Bucky having 127 yards and a touchdown, they would now have their first loss of the year. Bucky would end up bouncing back in a big way, as he then had 5 touchdowns in the next 4 games against Washington State, number 13 Utah, Cal, and USC, all of which the Ducks won. From there, he'd help them beat Arizona State, and then in their final regular season matchup, he'd help them beat number 16 Oregon State. They'd end up getting to the Pac-12 championship, where they would once again play against number 3 Washington. Bucky was extremely limited in this game, as he only had 9 carries for 20 yards, but he did catch 5 passes out of the backfield. They'd end up losing to the Huskies once again, also by 3 points. This was really unfortunate, as the Ducks would now miss the playoff, but they would play in the Fiesta Bowl against number 23 Liberty. Instead of opting out, Bucky would play in his final game, running for 117 yards with one touchdown. In total, Bucky finished with 1,180 yards and 11 total touchdowns, and also had 56 catches for 413 yards and two scores, becoming the third best receiver behind Tez Johnson and Troy Franklin. This was a pretty big deal, and he announced that he would leave Oregon for the 2024 NFL Draft. Irving played in 26 games for the Ducks, and he rushed for 2,121 yards and 15 touchdowns, while catching 84 passes for 694 yards and 5 scores as well. He ended up becoming a second-team All-Pac-12 selection, and actually was the number one running back in the country in terms of receiving. His playing style was characterized by his elusiveness and ability to make people miss, and he also focused on using power to his advantage as he broke a ton of tackles. He said, quote, I play with a chip on my shoulder because everybody talks about my size and how small I am. When I got the ball in my hands, I'm just not trying to let anybody bring me down, and I run hard. Because of his good elusiveness and versatility, he was seen as one of the more highly regarded players going into the NFL Combine, but unfortunately he would test near the bottom for all the running backs in multiple categories. According to NFL Mock Database, Bucky Irving was a projected 4th round pick in the 115th overall prospect, with a 3% chance of going in the first round. They're actually pretty close, as he eventually went at pick number 125 in the fourth round, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were super excited to get him. Despite those numbers, the Tampa Bay front office thought he was a priority on their draft board. Their general manager said, quote, At the end of the day, we stacked the draft board the way we stacked it, and we felt Bucky was the right fit for us. While the Bucks already have Rashad White and Chase Edmonds, Irving will be another great weapon to have in the offense. He's both a good runner who works hard, and will more importantly be used as a gadget player who will catch plenty of passes out of the backfield. He said, quote, I used to watch Rashad White highlights, and being able to come in and learn from a guy like him, I think it'll be great for me to just pick his brain and how he translated from college to the NFL, and I'm trying to be that dynamic in a one-two punch. Irving ended up being the sixth running back off the board, and he said he won't forget any of the NFL teams that passed on him. He said it'll motivate him as he transitions to the NFL, as will his south side upbringing. He said, quote, I want to be the guy from south of Chicago to set the example for the kids back home, and I definitely think he will. Despite all those challenges, he's focused on making an impact with the Bucks, learning the playbook, and getting to his role. According to everything I've seen, it looks like Irving's been doing really well in camp, and he's a guy I'm totally going to be rooting for. I can't imagine losing all those family members and being constantly picked on for your height. He's proved it at every level, and this is a guy who I will not bet against on. But what do you guys think? If you're a fan of the Bucks or Oregon or Minnesota, what do you think of Bucky Irving? Who's another rookie I should cover next? And also don't forget to check out my friend's book down below, as he really needs the support. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.